World War II simulation is a hands-on, interactive lesson plan designed to stimulate interest in the Second World War. Students will be put into leadership positions and burdened with the same problems and circumstances faced by the real leaders in 1939. With the addition of resources, the World War II simulation uses similar rules to the World War I simulation, but adds natural resources to the mix. The one aspect of the World War II history simulation that makes it so unlike a board game or video game is the human element. You don't know what your opponent is going to do, and even if you did, you wouldn't know how they were going to go about it and get it accomplished. That's a human factor in the simulation. Students are constantly problem solving as conditions can change by the minute. Remember, there is no guaranteed outcome. Students are constantly working on their persuasive skills as they try and influence others to go along with their master plan. Students are constantly trying to gain the advantage by reading ahead in the book and researching their opponents. The simulation is fully customizable in that you can add or delete certain parts to make it work for you. For example, I know one teacher in Winnipeg, Canada that is going to add the Canadian element into the simulation to go along with his curriculum. This is the best way I have found to get students excited about history. The big map is divided into countries that were involved in World War II. The allies are golden color, the Axis powers are yellow, and the neutrals are light green. Uninvolved countries are gray and cannot be involved in any way. Some countries are divided into zones like Germany. All the seas, oceans, and major islands are also marked. Significant geographical boundaries like the Suez Canal and the Ardennes Forest create a more realistic landscape. The seas and oceans are divided into zones to create a more realistic time frame for sea movement and transport of troops. Each land, zone, and country are separate objects that enable you to change their color on the map, denoting a change in ownership or a change in alliance. The students love to see those colors change. After each class period, I save as a copy of that period simulation as a year and post it to Moodle. Students then have an accurate map to plot their strategy for the next day. If you don't have Moodle or a website to post maps, you can print them out and post them outside your classroom. You could also upload them as a Google Doc. Students would then be able to print them off anytime. Since World War II is much larger in scope, we have a second map. The Pacific Theater map details the war in the Pacific. As you can see up here, we've got a declaration of war slip. It says, we the country of Germany. So Germany is going to be attacking. So put them in here. Declare war on the country of Poland. So Poland goes down here. All right, and it says that we're going to be sending 1,000 German troops. And so we need their rating. And so we go down here and we see that they have a rating of 9. Um, they are the attacker. And now Poland, which we'll go down here and see they have a rating of 3.6. So we'll put 3.6. Oops, 3.6 in there. I'm sorry, that would be, I think they have 900 troops in there, we'll say, for example, and the 3.6 goes there. And they are defending, so we're going to give them a bonus point in the attack defend column. And then our, our battle is calculated out. It looks here like uh, Germany is going to be victorious. It tells us they will have 540 troops left of their original 1,000. We can see down here that Poland had 900 troops and their original rating was 3.6. They had one for a bonus for defending since they were defending their own territory. They have no troops left. Germany has 540 troops left. As you see over here, the you can see off to the side, the Natural Resources Worksheet is calculating out um, what the rankings, what the ratings are for each country, and down over here we've got those all calculate down so they're easy for you to look up right underneath the battle calculator. So whatever you figure out over here, 
um, automatically comes over here and changes every night after you put in and take away resources. So you only have to look down here, you don't have to mess with any of this as far as figuring out what the battles would be. Now if we had multiple countries in there, we could change it a little bit. We could say Germany, Hungary, let's say they had 500 troops in this battle and Hungary's rating is 3.2 and we could add those troops and let's say Russia um, not Russia, but USSR was fighting with Poland um, and they sent in a thousand troops and they would be at the troops would be 1.1 they would not get the bonus defense because they would be moving in afterwards. And so now, with this new calculation, we come up with 506 Germans left and 253 Hungarians left. And the Poles and the Soviets are wiped out. So that's how you figure out uh, battles on the battle calculator. In the World War II simulation, natural resources are located, in general, where they were in 1939. Coal is marked by a red square, oil is marked by an oil derrick, iron ore is marked by a capital I, and rubber is marked by a rubber leaf. Controlling these areas means controlling those resources and brings light to life the strategic importance of that region. Students can transfer resources to their allies with the transfer of resources list slip. The slip gives you a written record of the transfer and allows you to keep track and back up your spreadsheet in case you get lost. We also use these slips to transfer resources when countries are taken over. The box in the upper left is used to mark sheets that have been entered into the spreadsheet. This saves time and frustration in case you are interrupted when updating the re natural resources spreadsheet. Soviet Union to Germany and as you see down here on our slip uh, the country says Soviet Union for class period 5 and we're transferring 10 credits of oil 6 credits of iron ore and 4 credits of coal in the year 1939 and both countries have signed it to the country of Germany so first of all um, in the acquired button down here we're going to be taking 10 credits of oil out of the Soviet Union so we're going to put in a minus 10 in the acquired which is the A and then we're going to go up to Germany and we're going to add 10 credits would give that to 14.5 in their rating which took them to got them to their one you can't get over a one uh, then iron ore six um, and we'll say that they had two acquired to start with so we're gonna go a total of minus six there and that gave them a negative number so that wouldn't be a very good transfer for them but we're just gonna use this as an example and we'll give six up here to Germany See, and all the calculations are being made for you and if you look over here at their rating uh, it gives their military rating right here, which is the number that doesn't change, and then their rating changes as you change the numbers in here. So the final one is coal. We're going to be taking coal out of there, which leaves them with 5.3, lowers their rating, and we put 4 in up here. So we've got three full credits, no rubber yet, and Germany is now at a 9.0 for their rating. So this is automatically calculated. These don't change. The yellow boxes um, show you whether there's numbers in there or not, but only the boxes that have squares on them like these uh, right here are the ones that you put numbers in. Everything else does its own calculations. You shouldn't mess with anything that doesn't have a box on it. And then if we were done, we'd go down here, and this is we use these paper slips just so we can keep track of everything. 
uh, you'd put an X in this box showing that you had already done that one just in case you get interrupted and you have to go do something you've got these boxes checked so you know which ones you've done and which ones you haven't done and of course you do these at the end of the period um, before the next period so the spreadsheets ready to go you don't try to do it during class because there's no way you can keep track of all that stuff so as they're transferring resources they'll hand in these slips down here during the day and then during your free, per free period you'll uh, put them all into the spreadsheet so that's how you change the natural resources um, and it automatic automatically keeps track of the rating for you thank you The World War II simulation uses four natural resources to calculate the power rating of each country. Oil, iron ore, coal, and rubber. The H, or have column on the spreadsheet, represents the amount of that resource that the country has or originally when the simulation starts. The T, or total column, represents all the resource available for that country. Have plus acquired, the A, or the acquire column, represents how much resource that country has acquired through trade or conquering. The N, or need column, represents how much resource that country needs to achieve a full one point for that resource. With a total of four resources, a country can add four points to its rating by having all the resources it needs. So in summary, if you add your resource ratings to your beginning military rating, that is your overall rating. Fortunately, the spreadsheet does this for you. All you have to do is keep the resources up to date. If you happen to make a mistake, that's okay. Chance plays a role as well, just like in the real thing. Calculated spreadsheet. And as you look on here, we're looking at just a view of the oil, iron ore, and coal. And of course, we also have rubber on this sheet. Um, but there is there's some red lettering up here that tells us do not put any numbers inside the yellow boxes because those boxes will be calculating things out and if you put something in there it'll wipe out the formulas so let's just talk about oil as an example let's say that we have two credits of oil in our country and our chart tells us we'll say we need eight credits of oil in order to get a full point for the natural resource of oil. So we have a deficit of negative six, which means we've got to find six credits of oil either by transferring or by taking somebody over, which would mean acquiring it. So we're say we're gonna attack um, the Netherlands in the Dutch East Indies. And let's say we take them over and they have seven credits of oil. So we're going to acquire seven credits of oil from the Netherlands. So now you can see we have a surplus of one. So we've got our full eight that we need to reach our, our credit of one in our rating. And we've also got one left over that we can trade to our allies for something else if we need it. Um, so that shows that there is a surplus of one. And you do that with all the resources that you capture or you transfer so that you know and you can keep track of how much you have and all the calculating is done for you. The teacher binder includes materials to organize and keep the teacher on track during the simulation. The teacher instructions include the preparation for the simulations, what materials are needed, and how to organize them so students understand what's going on. One of the topics included is how to pick your leaders. This is a very critical step. You need to try and match the personalities of your students to those of the countries they will represent. The teacher instructions include the organization of documents for the student binders. Also included are some extras designed to jazz up the simulation. One example is the playing of intense music in the background. The students love that. You can also come up with your own ideas.
The teacher notes are used to keep track of day-to-day, -day, or in this case, year-to-year, -year, what country will be starting in the order of turns and what phase they are in. Is it war or is it movement after war? This can be a very highly contested issue if proper notes aren't taken. Students take this simulation personal, and even though some things aren't fair, this is one area it has to be.